Welcome, everybody. My name is Kevin from Music with Flavor, uh, where we bring you the latest and greatest in music industry advice. Very happy today to have a special guest to talk about some key considerations when it comes to international uh, music distribution. So without further ado, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Yuri Kobayashi. Right. Hey. Uh, so Yuri, how are you doing today? <laughs> I am doing good. Thank you. That's awesome. So where are you hailing from, Yuri? Right now, I'm in the office of Uvascula in Finland. Awesome. Yeah. So with this discussion, like I said, we're just hoping to go through some topics related to distribution and help our viewers uh, learn more, uh, because I think this is a pretty interesting topic that not everyone uh, considers. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we know of music distribution in the general terms, but from an international standpoint, um, could you maybe discuss a bit about what Music Info is uh, for the viewers who don't already know? Yeah, Music Info is a digital music distributor. We focus uh, mainly on China. And what we try to do is find opportunity in these new music markets for mostly independent musicians and labels to find a new audience for their music. So in terms of services, so if I'm trying to get my music, you know, to maybe like a Spotify or are those platforms, I don't, that's a little bit different, right? It's not, uh, yeah. So that you guys why China, say, uh, yeah. China is, it's a closed market, uh, meaning that Spotify, uh, most streaming, uh, services are not available in China. So if you have your music on Spotify, um, you might think that your music is in China, but it's not. And also with uh, social media as well as if you are trying to promote your music or your artist image, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, it's not in China. So you have to find uh, okay. these uh, uh, other channels to um, get your push your music. Yeah, to push your music. Okay. Yeah. So you guys deal with distribution in China. And then on top of that, would that be other promotion yeah, and we stuff do like that too. Well. That you with, yeah. So uh, it's like um, paid promotion uh, posts to uh, Weibo and WeChat are the main okay. uh, platforms in China. Uh, it's kind of like your Twitter um, and Facebook uh, outside of China. Right. Once your music is streaming live in China, then, you know, it, it, it works the same in there in China as well as outside. You have to... Um, you know, stream your music and then promote it. And then, you know, you have your, uh, we also do video promotion as well. So it's not just right. media. Uh, and then, mm -hmm. you know, you can you tie them all together so that you can find the uh, biggest reach to your potential listeners. Right. Okay. Would you say that there's a lot? So like in obviously North America and stuff like that, you have so many distributors uh, that uh, are popping up in terms of, you know, getting yourself on those typical platforms uh, or DSPs. Uh, would you say that in China, there is a lot of comp competition, uh, like amongst companies like yourselves? Or is there uh, a lot smaller pool to pick from when it comes to that? Well, just recently, uh, I think that uh, the bigger distributors have picked up on China. And so most distribution offers some kind of distribution to China. Uh, right. That being said, there are, uh, everyone's probably heard of Tencent. So Tencent Music Entertainment, yes, yeah. they have three streaming uh, platforms, uh, QQ, uh, Kuo, and Google. Mm -hmm. If they don't distribute to Tencent, then they distribute to NetEase, which is the second okay. biggest uh, streamer there, uh, or both of them. So uh, there is, I think, a lot of competition now because if you were to use Music Info, you're not going to get your music distributed worldwide. It's only to China. Right. So you would have to right. complement your distribution uh, with some other distributor that also distributes to the other uh, territories. Got you, got you. Okay, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I've heard of Tencent, and uh, but I didn't quite realize the extent of how many platforms were actually out there. Um, because yes, I, I, like you're saying, I have noticed some companies are offering like, hey, we do promote or get your music to some platforms on, in those areas. Um, but it's all, usually like a small list of, of uh, platforms there. So yeah. uh, I did notice that you guys do get the gamut of it when it comes to that side of things, right? Yeah, well, what Music Info offers is uh, not only the mainstream services, but we have a host of uh, like smaller music and media services that uh, like it's about 50 plus services where 
your music could be utilized or monetized uh, somehow. Uh, either it's like a satellite or you know uh, internet radio, and uh, we found that a lot of our customers benefit from those smaller services than they do from the mainstream, where you're putting your music out in competition with all the rest of the mainstream artists. So right, right. that's I think where we have the extra benefit uh, that we can offer to. Uh, people who distribute through us. Okay, so what's another form of promotion that you guys uh, are able to help artists with? We can uh, get your music on playlists uh, on uh, NetEase. Uh, we work with influential private owners of uh, playlists on NetEase, and uh, so if you like to have uh, an extra boost for your music, right. then this is a good option that uh, I don't believe anyone else offers. Okay, perfect. In terms of that, so is this like a, not to go down to brass tacks on like commissions or anything like that, but if I'm an artist and I think that's the whole kind of mantra right now is, mm -hmm. you know, own your masters, things like that. Uh, would you say like if I'm an artist coming to work with Music Info uh, and I'm paying for your service, am I getting hit with a commission fee on top of that too? Or how does that kind of structure out? Because at the end of the day, you guys are providing a service and doing something uh, for the artist too, right? So how does that kind of structure play out? Yeah, the way uh, we have it set up is that it's just an initial entrance fee. So once, okay. once you pay for your uh, access to the distribution platform is any royalties that uh, we collect from the streaming services there, we pay 100% to the artist so we don't take a, a commission at all. That's awesome. Okay. I know a lot of artists kind of get, you know, that's a big thing for them if, that, is, you know, if they're going to move forward with a platform. So yeah. 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 And I know that uh, we know we've been thinking about uh, going or at least maybe offering some kind of commission uh, possibility because... For some artists, it is a jump, uh, kind of a leap of faith almost that uh, they want to distribute uh, to China. And so if there is uh, like a commission opportunity, try it out for a year and then, you know, we take a percentage of whatever that maybe uh, we might get more um, uh, or, or be able to offer that that kind of, of service to uh, the the artists that may think that it's too expensive or is not quite ready to, I guess, make that jump, make that jump. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> right. Yeah. At, at, at the time being, it seems to be working just fine. That's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. In terms of like, so an artist, most of my audience would be North American, you know, U S Canada, maybe um, in terms of that, me as an artist, maybe putting out my music on like, another with a, another platform like say TuneCore or CD Baby or something uh, it kind of seems like in turn you're saying I would have to now latch on to music info as well so could you speak to maybe some of the benefits as opposed outside of just oh we can you know promote your music um, or get your music on platforms in China mm -hmm. uh, I'm just seeing like as an artist is there have you seen things where people have broken through in those markets um, from other areas uh, and things like that and, and had maybe more of a you know more traction down there as opposed to where they are locally kind of thing yes uh, like I said before it's the what we found is the smaller services that uh, the music has been picked up um, okay and we have had a fair number of uh, artists who, you know, they, they've tried to uh, get their music uh, no, noticed in, you know, outside of China and uh, mm -hmm. haven't really gotten much traction there. And then right. distributed through us and their music has been picked up and, you know, they're, they're getting paid. Um, those are the, the success stories. And that is possible. Yeah. In terms of those platforms, uh, are they working similar? I'm not familiar with them personally, just to be honest, but uh, are they working similar to the Spotify's or, you know, your Apple Music in that sense, but just over there? Because I get what you're saying. Like, mm -hmm. you, over there, there's no um, Spotify. I can't just, you know, download that app over there. So those apps are pretty much identical in a sense, or is there other features that they provide that, you know, is kind of different in our realm? Uh, okay, so you're talking about like the user experience. The actual user, like the DSPs and yeah, stuff like that. So if I'm using Spotify here, I know I have Spotify for artists. I have all that. I'm just wondering if those are just pretty much splitting images, just different companies and names, just providing music to, you know, the end well, user or. 
No. Uh, the difference, I think, is that there is a lot bigger social aspect that's intertwined or interweaved in the uh, Chinese uh, streaming services. So take NetEase, for example, where you as a listener can leave comments mm -hmm. on all the songs. Okay. And uh, as an artist, you know, you can read those comments and, you know, right. interact with your listeners, you know, where the music is at. So, right, um, right. you know, that's just, just one aspect that um, I think is really missing from Western streaming services is that it, it's kind of uh, you distribute your music to Spotify and then you just wait and, and see if you're going to get streams or not. Um, but to get right. kind of interaction, you know, you're gonna have to look to uh, social media to to get that. Right. Okay. So just more like a one platform approach. I I can actually interact with my audience and actually kind of get to know who they are, as opposed to oh, there's someone out there listening to my music, but who is that person? And you know, I might have to go to another platform like social media, yeah. essentially, to kind of yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because I've heard of. I don't think this is streaming. I don't know if it has it intertwined. Is it WeChat? Yeah. Um, that is over there. Does that have a streaming aspect to it, or from music side, or no? Is that well, WeChat is it's kind of a multi-purpose. Uh, application, you can pretty much do everything on it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it it is mainly a messaging app, but you can uh, you know do your shopping on it, right, right. And a lot of uh, applications require that you have a WeChat account. Um, it's kind of in order to yeah. If you if you have a Facebook account, then you can log into other uh, sites based on your Facebook profile. Uh, WeChat is kind of right. it kind of works the same way. Um, so mm -hmm. you could be listening to your music, you could be um, shopping at the same time, messaging your friends, uh, sharing the music. Right. So it's really much more uh, like a virtual world there. That world, yeah, yeah. And uh, right. what I understand is a lot of uh, the Chinese population spends a lot of time on WeChat. <laughs> no. that makes sense that makes sense yeah um what would you say is like a, a common myth i guess about the market in china or you know what you guys do at music info that you would like to debunk if you'd say yeah i think there's still this idea that in china uh there's a lot of piracy and that uh artists if you send your music there that it's it's going to get stolen and you're not going to get paid for it um where mm -hmm. that that it's just not true, um, you know, and or copyrighted music that is used illegally. You know, you, you look anywhere in the world. Um, right. The the way that uh, it differs from, I guess, the Western world is that to collect your royalties, if you have your music streaming elsewhere, you would have to um, be a part of a uh, performance rights organization uh, or right. global um, sound exchange if you want your digital uh, music royalties from your digital music streaming. Um, it was a Terry Fox from, or Harry Fox from the, uh, if you have your uh, yep. cover songs or, or whatever, and they take care of collecting your money and then, you know, dividing out to, uh, the artist, distributing it out, yeah. out yeah. to the artist. Right. So, right. uh, with, with digital streaming music in China is that there is no organization like that. So, um, it's mm -hmm. really controlled by the streaming services. They're the ones that collect the royalties or, you know, the, from the listeners, um, and pay them, right. pay it out to, uh, the artists. And that's where, right. uh, service like music info comes in is that we collect those royalties <clears throat> and then, uh, pay them out to the artists. Uh, right. so if there is piracy happening, it's bad for business. <laughs> Right, exactly. Right. right. So right. the way that it is, um, music is utilized, you know, in, in streaming apps is that there's everything is, it was controlled. Everything can be seen, you know, where the mu music is used, where and who is using it. Right. Uh, so there's very little leeway, uh, that you can really, uh, use music around. legally. And, uh, so that is something that, it, it often comes up, um, but I, it seems, I think, that people are, are understanding more that China is more or less on the same 
uh, playing field as, as the rest of the world when it comes to the terms of uh, uh, music security and copyright. Like you're saying, like uh, that can happen anywhere. I mean, especially now with technology, um, I think you, you think of like some of these beat uh, sites where you can go buy a beat and things, things like that. Or even I look at like uh, Clubhouse and stuff like that, like how people will just share their music, you know, without and not have it copyrighted or whatever it might be. Uh, someone can just listen to that and just, you know, take that idea and concept and run with it. So yeah. uh, I, I get what you're saying. It's not just one specific area that okay if i'm dealing with china i'm only dealing with piracy issues there mm -hmm. uh, I, I get what you're saying from that standpoint another point that i just want to say is that uh, we got a lot of uh artists who get their uh distribution plan and they say they want to test the water so they distribute an album or a single mm -hmm. or usually it's just like a single or, or two and then let it run for a year and then see if it's something that they want to uh, invest more in and more often than not is that they they come back disappointed because well uh they haven't actually done the legwork to um uh in in their own uh platforms like it's, they might have their music on spotify they might have it on some other streaming service if they do then there's no bio there's no um uh there's no they don't have a website or their social media is uh, lacking or so it's really difficult right. to find their um their profile or their music and right then they they come in and you know distribute to us thinking oh china is this you know get quick rich <laughs> possibility right um right but the the reality is it's it's no different is that you have to put the work in and uh right you know even even then it really depends on uh, the listeners you know do they like your music and of course you know promotion um helps a lot as well so right yeah right no that makes sense it, it comes down to obviously the branding the push the overall foundation of everything and not just thinking it's a quick fix like you're saying yeah um you did mention the money though that which that, that interests me in terms of so obviously with things like spotify people are always like oh what they pay out and, and things mm -hmm. like that so is there you know is I, I, is it a bet in more in favor of the artist when it comes to payouts when we're talking royalties and things like that over on that side of things or is there still that similar um war that you could say going on uh trying to get more for the artists in that sense uh, not necessarily for you because you guys are trying to pull the money you know from the distributors over there mm -hmm. um but are they paying out more than like a spotify or how does that kind of break down or is that i know that's probably an open-ended question but uh yeah, well, I think what you got to do is realize that it is an emerging uh, emerging market, and right. so right. they still are not at the level of like the established music markets such as Europe and the United States. It's it's really young, and you have to find a way to make it work. Um, a, yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, there is huge potential, meaning that these new markets uh and now i'm talking also about say like africa as well the majority of the world population you know lies in say these these two continents <laughs> asia right, right. Africa, and also consider south america as well is you're gonna have to look outside of your own home and you right. know, th th these populations will soon be the major consumers of or yeah everything so I think where maybe the amount of pay is not at the same level as these, you know, old established music markets is that it'll make up in the, the numbers. My next question in terms of like your kind of future predictions uh, for those markets in terms of like China, uh, in terms of growth, because uh, I personally, like I notice a lot of things that are coming out there, like you just kind of stay in your own bubble for me sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and you don't notice that. Okay. Like, like you're saying, like in Africa, there's people with millions of followers from there that you probably never heard of. Same with, you know, Latin America and all those areas um, that are growing. So with that, do you think obviously that presents opportunities all around? Um, but how does that kind of play into what you guys are doing at music info um, and what you kind of see moving forward, where things are going to go, um, whether that's with technology, 
you know, you name it kind of thing. Whether or not you're on board to uh, expand your services into these uh, emerging areas, I think that it's inevitable. And we want to take that uh, initiative. Um, just recently, we now offer distribution to South Korea. And coming soon, I think in the next month or so, we will have distribution to Africa as well. And uh, realizing, too, that people... People are generally lazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. If everything was on one platform, it would be better than having two different platforms, right? So we right. also want to, uh, or looking into having a 360 degree distribution service so that people can come here and get their music to the all the uh, the new markets, as well right. as, you know, your Spotify, Amazon Music, right. iTunes, you know, uh, like everyone else to the rest of the world. So right, um, right. that is the future of music info. So you're starting on the other side of the coin as kind opposed of, to, yeah, you know, other, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's cool. I, I like that in, in terms of that approach. Cause I think there's a lot going on, like I said, and um, I just, even technology wise. And, and I mean, I've seen things where it's even not even an artist, like it's just like a, a hologram or like, a, I can't remember what the actual word is where, you know, that's being promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's just a lot of different things that I, I think with the industry, it, it's going in a lot of different directions. And like you're saying, uh, you kind of don't have a choice. Uh, so for someone who's just thinking locally, I mean, I, I think with the internet and now you don't just need to be like someone could be listening to your music anywhere in the world uh and you can tap into those markets for sure so um but yeah other than that is there anything you know about music info you know that we missed that maybe we should have asked you or um well because we have been focusing on china we have a very good connection to uh the services there now we also offer sync opportunities. So this is something that is really popular with musicians now is that uh, they want to get their music uh, heard on movies, TV, yeah. uh, ads, yeah. such that. So yeah, if you want to have uh, a better experience with your distribution, specifically with China, what I understand of anyone who has distributed the music through other distributors, is that they don't really know what happens to the music once it gets to China. They maybe they have <laughs> some number of streams and maybe it shows the amount of uh, royalties they get uh, if there are any. But other than that, it's kind of, uh, you know, push the button and just see what happens. So, right. Uh, yeah, if uh, you like to know more what's happening with your music in China, then um, you know, you can see right. that your music is being played on all these services and the amount of royalties that uh, each service pays out. And uh, once your music is distributed through us is that you have these possible uh, possibilities to for it, like sync. If you have uh, music that has been previously unreleased, uh, new music is that you have uh, the chance to get your music uh, on banners, like uh, on the stream, okay, cool. stream sites. So it's not just about adding a checkbox to your list of um, territories through your distributor. Right. You know, that, that the service has a more value to your own music. I mean, you yeah. just, yeah, musicians, they, they spend uh, their whole life making music. So, you know, why? Right. Yeah. Is that something that's already out that like, if I were to use music info, I could tap into the sync type of thing. And, is that something where it's not necessarily open to everybody? Like anyone can, you know, be open to that opportunity, but is there a selection process that goes into that or? Um... At the moment, no, uh, it's uh, okay. Uh, anyone who distributes the music through us, then the, there's a sync opportunity. Yeah. And I see what you're saying. Cause uh, in terms of, you know, you see some of these distributors and you obviously notice, okay, I, you know, they're distributing it to, you know, 300, DSPs or whatever, uh, and you know, you see that, oh, we also do distribution to China, right? So like, I get what you're saying in a sense, it's just a checkbox, like, oh, okay, cool, it's there. Yeah. Um, but you guys are trying to bring more transparency to actually what's going on in that market and allowing artists to see the potential, I guess, in terms of opportunity there too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if uh, anyone 
has any more questions, of course, they can contact me directly or, you know, come visit us. Yeah, cool. And that's what I think I was going to obviously ask is uh, where I just where people could connect with you specifically and, and, you know, how they could get started with Music Info, obviously, if they want to get started today. Yeah, so uh, come visit us at uh, musicinfo.io. Uh, you can okay. send me an email to uh, yuri.kobayashi at musicinfo.io. You know, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Right. Well, it was a pleasure having you today, and um, I appreciate the chat, and I'm sure the audience does as well. So thank you once again. Yes, thank you very much, Kevin.